Welcome back, everybody. Great to see you. I've got a new project here, Tiny Equals Big. I call it Tiny Equals Big because it's such a little, cute little book, and it made such a big impact on, on YouTube that I know I have to share and do more because we're on a roll now, people, and I'm so glad you're encouraged by the series and it's just too much fun not to continue. So let's get f move forward with Tiny Equals Big Week 1. You know if you've watched previous e uh, series of mine that I like to start off an abstract with mark making. Just simple pencil crayons making marks. And this is just to get into the zone, get into, um, into my mindfulness play. And I am not, if you're new to this channel, you, I want you to know that I'm not trying to make you an artist. You do not need to know how to draw even a stick figure. All you have to do is have the desire to play and have fun with paint just like artists do because you deserve it too. And I really like to reach out to people who have had an illness or surgeries or anything like that, that they're immobile and they need an escape. And this is just as good an escape to me as meditating, which I also do, but I have way more fun doing this and I get so into my zone that I don't think about anything going on in my day. All I'm doing is having fun playing and being in the moment. So this is for you people. And I really, really am thrilled at how many people I have watching me from around the world. So I love your comments. I especially like to hear where you're from and uh, don't be shy, share, share this journey with me. So when I make my marks uh, with pencil crayon, they're, they're permanent. These are wax crayons. They're permanent as well, but they are used as a resist. So I'm trying to show you new, new techniques. And in this series, we're moving forward even better. And uh, what you've learned in the first series is um, great. And now we're, we're doing more of the same, but different stencils, different masks, different techniques. And... Uh, but the same goal. So another great little book. And I use the wax as a resist. And now I'm going to use my high flow acrylic inks, which I love. And they flow beautifully. They spread around the page, especially when you add water like this. And I just have so much fun with them. I encourage you to get a set of only three colors if that's all you can start with. And you can do so much with three colors. Three or four. And uh, so right now I'm just putting a lot of water on the page and I'm using a very, very soft brush with fairly long bristles so that it just helps to really move quickly the paint around the page. You can see with these high flow acrylics, they're full of intense paint. Um, and on the right, it shows it right out of the jar and out of the bottle. And on the left, it goes lighter and brighter as it hits more water. So that's what I like about these acrylic paints is they're so flexible. They, it, in, in one bottle and one color, you can get so many variations and it really lasts quite a long time as well. So I'm adding more water and now I'm gonna do blue. And I'm trying at first not to let the colors touch because if that blue meets that green, it becomes an olive green, which I don't love as much. But then again, you might. And so the whole point of this spread here is that we're playing with color and how it reacts on the page with water. In fact, this whole first week of this new book, Tiny Equals Big, it's take, going beyond what we've done before and really learning and exploring and having fun with what the paint does, how it reacts to paper, how does it react to paper that's been treated with matte medium or with, with other uh, modeling paste, or how does it how does it react like in this case where there's nothing on the page it's just the water and the paint and it's getting absorbed into the texture of the paper so these are all things that are fun to learn and remember it is paper it only paper it's just a little paper book it's it's not for a gallery it's not for display unless you want to display it oh and here when i blow dried it i was um, taking paper towel and pressing down onto the paint and uh, then lifting off and what happens is it reveals the imprint of the paper towel and it just gives a beautiful impression and pattern on the page. And this is a trick I do often and you could use other towels, other things that have texture and look at how amazing that is and, and you couldn't have thought of painting that um, and make it look like that. This is, this is called layers of ink, layers of paint 
and then re, uh, doing techniques in between, then adding more layers. And that's how you get the interest. And I love my abstracts having a lot of layers of interest. I also usually do two colors plus the white, and a third is my accent color, which in this case is the orange. And I like to do my accent in three areas, but different in all three areas. And it helps to move the eye around the page. So on the next page, I'm getting ready for my next spread. Of course, I, I protect that inner seam, that inner binding us spine with um, masking tape so that it doesn't bleed as much. But we're still, you'll find out that we get bleeding through those um, um, center areas anyway, but it's just a little book. We can fix it if we don't like it after, so that's, that's just the reality. If you're putting wet paint on paper, it's going to soak through. This is all about having a little book and having fun and exploring, so not to worry. So this is modeling paste or molding paste, depending on what the supplier names it. I'm using a paint spreader to spread the modeling paste fairly flat over all the grooves of the stencil. So therefore it reveals a modeling paste only where the stencil openings were. And in this case, it's all these lovely bubbles. I love it. I'm doing complementary polka dots that are very small up in the top left as a complement. Again, using a flat scraper. Make sure you wash these in between use because otherwise that modeling paste dries onto them and ruins them. So have good habits, people. So I'm using a bigger paint spreader now to remove some of those because the polka dots were a very regular pattern and the bubbles are random. So I'm trying to make the polka dots a little bit more random. And I'm also on the right there scraping away anything that was bits of modeling paste that didn't um, have the bubble shape. I'm using a fine liner um, tube with my high flow acrylic white paint in it to just cover up and mask some of the color that bled through the previous spread and now I'm I'm just doing some squiggles random squiggles around the page so what I'm showing you on this spread is two different types of resist isn't that fun I love doing this if you see my abstracts you'll see that I do that quite often so I've got them flowing through the page they're going to dry slightly raised uh, because it came out of that tube. You can see here close up, it's a little bit bubbled up and raised. And I just thought I want to accent a little bit more of the squiggles there. So again, we're going to have, oh, and I propped up the page because I didn't want it to dry and drip down. I wanted to keep the relief of those squiggles as they were. And now I'm adding a liquid um, Nicolazzo Gold, which is one of my three favorites. And as you can see, the more you spread it into the water, the brighter the yellow becomes. This is one of my favorite colors because it is so uh, flexible. And this is my quinacridone red, which if it goes on, it goes on stronger than actually some of the other colors. So it requires a little bit more water to balance out the weight of the color. But I love, and I hope you can see how it's reacting and getting modeled. And it depends on the surface of the paper, how much gets absorbed. Uh, the darker the pink there, the more it absorbed into the paper. And now with the blue, I'm showing you how wonderful it is to have the relief of those polka dots because they stick out higher than the paint and they remain white. And the paint just moves along the surface of the paper and eventually gets absorbed into the paper. So this is fun. And again, the modeling paste is a resist and the squiggle lines out of the tube is a, re a second resist. So it's really fun on this spread to show you how much fun it is to watch the paint react to the resist and how it, it'll go over top of it, but in most cases you could wipe that away and it's, it's not getting absorbed by either of those resists. So I, I'm, I'm using some more paint to make it darker and it's, showing you that you need it a little darker like there in order to color that resist squiggle, but it's not going to color it completely. And then if you want to even go further, put some rubbing alcohol onto paper towel or use a baby wipe. And I'm wiping away the surface because it's a relief. It's sitting up higher than the paper. So if you wipe along the top with your hand, it takes away the paint that was there and it reveals the white bubbles. So isn't that fun? It's such a great technique. I want you to experiment with that. Try different stencils, try different 
techniques and it's just so much fun. And now all I'm doing is putting a little blue so that it's not only in the top left of the spread. There's a hint of it on the right. I'm adding more blue than I, I need and then I'm going to wipe a dab actually and make it more distressed and less obvious. So I just want a very hint of blue there and that's about it. And all I'm doing is trying to move the eye around the page. And even though this is not an abstract painting for a gallery, uh, this is how I think. I'm giving you my thought process. Here's another technique called dry on dry. And I'm using my finger, but it could be a brush. But I prefer my finger because it gives more of a smudge. And all I'm doing is placing the paint down and very, very lightly spreading it across the page. I'm not pressing hard. And what I want to do is reveal the surface of the paper. And the paint, because it was dry, and it's not spreading by water. It sticks on the surface in a modeled area, and it's just a lot of fun. And it's also showing the squiggle lines, how that darker pink um, stains some of that squiggle line a little bit pink. I'm going to uh, go a little further, and this is, it's a dry background now, and I'm adding stronger color and on the top left here, what you see I'm doing top left of the middle area there, is I'm going to, right here, I'm going to start doing that dry on dry, which is very light pressing. And again, what's revealed is the surface of the paper. And now here, I'm doing purposely darker and more paint, uh, making a bigger impact with the paint, because I like to create depth. Uh, I don't want everything to look two dimensional. I really, I, I, I quite enjoy doing depths in my painting. And so you've got the colors going into the background the more I add, and the squiggle lines popping forward, and that's and the bubbles popping forward. So that's a lot of fun. I'm putting a little bit in the top area there because I wanted to color cover the white that was in the spine of the book, but I'm not loving loving that very much. I'll probably wipe some away. But here I'm showing you again that you have to put, you have to really put a lot of a deeper color and it's still being resisted by that squiggle, but it's fun because it stains it a little bit. And now I'm going to add a little more of my Nicolazzo gold in the bottom right, again, to move the eye over to the page. Have fun experimenting and if you're not ready to do this in your little book, then do it on some scrap papers on the side. Just to just take a few pages of watercolor paper and just play around with techniques. See what they do before you hit the page. I've got cold wax medium here, and this is uh, it. It goes on like a butter, and the more you rub, the softer it gets. And this I'm rubbing very firmly all over the spread because this will allow you to fold the bait, close the book, and fold the pages without the paint sticking from one page to the other. Uh, this is this, but it's expensive. It's not cheap, this stuff. So if you can't afford that, you'll see that most often what I'm doing is baby powder or cornstarch, something like that. The idea is to make the page not stick together when it's closed, especially there in the spine. And when you leave it to dry, leave it open like that. Don't close it. Now I'm doing another spread and I'm using wax crayons. The other ones were twistables, they were very skinny. These ones are wax crayons that are a little thicker. You could use any cheap children's wax crayons. Believe me, you don't need to buy expensive wax crayons. So I'm using the white and it'll be hard to see the result until we add paint over it. The whole point here is to show you again how wax resists water and paint. So I'm having fun with four colors. I'm just making some shapes moving them around. Usually when I add shapes like that, I do odd numbers, three, five. I don't do even numbers. I like asymmetry. And I'm protecting the spine this time when I add some water. Hopefully it won't bleed through the middle as much as it has before. But I'm starting off with white uh, water because it helps the... Uh, if I don't put the water on first and then I add paint from this fluid paint, uh, it absorbs in a dark spot and you can see that if you've got water on there first, it helps move it around the page quicker because there's nothing to protect that paper, so it gets absorbed immediately uh, unless you use water to spread it around. And I'm starting off light because I'm not too sure if I want to take this to a bolder direction or keep it pale, but I'm trying to give you an, uh, uh, the effect 
And again, you can see when I dab, sometimes the paper towel makes that imprint of the texture. But I'm trying to get, really show you uh, the effect of how paint all, uh, resists the wax. So I decided I need more color. So I'm going to add more and then I'll wash it away and where I wash it away it will take away paint with it and you will reveal isn't that fun look at that imprint but it, but it's not going to last because I'm going to add water and that will change it but that's okay I just showed you a technique and if you liked it like that by all means this spread looks fabulous just like it is you could leave it like that but you know me I like to show you further so I'm getting ready to I'm, I'm putting a lot of paper towel under there to absorb, but you can see now as I spray water, that paint was over the wax, but it wasn't there permanently. So the moment I added water, it, it ran away and revealed the wax crayon scribbling that I had. And I think that's just amazing. I love it. And make sure that you have paper towels handy to dab away. Make sure you dab the edges of the pages too so they don't bleed through to the back. But there's a fun, it was quick and easy, but a very, very valuable lesson for you to learn. So I think this page was an important one to show you. I think it's fun. It makes my soul sing. I, I have fun. Look at all the textures. You've got textures from the paper and textures from the wax. Uh, the only thing I need to do now is cover up some of that middle spine where... Um, well, uh, paint from a previous spread bled through and it altered the colors of the beautiful blue on this one and at the bottom here I decided to use my highlighter to make a little oval there so two things it's kind of fixing the bleeding color from the spine and it's adding an oval shape which matches the rest of the page so here we go here's I did this when it was bone dry by the way I've sped this up but it was dry and then I add baby powder and spread that all over especially in the spine because that's it's going to stick wherever I put paint uh, so those are those are tricks you should do every single time so a new spread here brought out the pencil crayons again making my marks getting in my zone I didn't do all these five in one day by the way this is spread out through the week I'm just putting it um, sped up and edited and condensed for you I did a few deliberate orange lines there, marks there, because I'm hoping that they will show up after. But now on this spread, I'm doing a similar technique where we're doing the modeling paste, but this time a new stencil. And it's a busy stencil. I'm going to add more modeling paste on the page. And the whole goal is to hope that later on some of those marks that I've just put there with pencil crayon will be revealed through, through the process. It's a crafters workshop stencil and it's got a scribble font that is so close to how I scribble on my artwork all the time that when I saw this I had to buy it. I'm using modeling paste again. You hold it down firmly, use my paint spreader. I like a small paint spreader because it's able to, I'm able to control where I add the paste um, more easily than a big one. And I'm scraping in different directions trying to spread out, level out the level of um, paste on there and then I'm going to get out a bigger paint spreader there and press really hard and across and then up in the other direction just to make sure everything's got an even coating and I'm using my finger to dab away while the stencil's still in place uh, any paste that went beyond the shape isn't that fun I just I'm crazy about this so much fun and you can see how some of those marks I made on the page are getting covered over some of them will be revealed that's a lot of fun I'm going to do the second page. I put it up a little higher because I want to have quite a bit of um, impact of this stencil on my page because it's so fun. So set, same technique as the last spread, but new. it, it looks so different when you've got all, all I've done is switch the stencil, uh, the stencils and the masks. So just proves to you that one technique can take you in many directions. Lift off straight up when you lift those off so that you don't smear the modeling paste. And again, put the book aside, clean those babies off right away so that they don't accumulate paint or modeling paste on them. Good habits. So I, I don't like all the color that's going up the middle spine there. So again, I'm getting my fine liner out 
and dabbing it in there and I'll press with my finger to put it in there and uh, the only problem with when I do that is that that paint there is a resist as well so when I put paint over the spread I'm going to end up with a white stripe up the middle and I have to deal with that. I gave it a really good dry. Sometimes the modeling paste dries quickly, sometimes it takes a while. Or you could walk away, have supper, do an errand and come back. The whole point is don't do this next step until that modeling paste is dry. So again, I put a lot of water on there. Look at the fun of that paint going into all the grooves. That's the whole point of this spread here is to show you the busier the, spread, um, the stencil and the more modeling paste on it, the more areas that you make of canyons and grooves where the paint could go into. And where it shows brighter is where the paint is sitting on the surface. And if you wipe it away, you can reveal more of that white modeling paste. But if you don't, uh, eventually the paint dries and it can stay there. But I like to play with the levels of depth. So you shall see how we take care of that as we move along. It's not bone dry. I don't mind that it's still a bit wet because I don't mind when this red blends with the yellow. It becomes an orange and they're all complementary. So um, it's okay that the yellow wasn't bone dry before I went to the next step. The only thing I'm conscious of is I want to keep dabbing away near the top because I would like this spread. Oh, look at that. Look at how, speaking of spread, look at how, how that glorious paint just because of the water, just immediately shoots into all those crevices and grooves. And now I'm just lightly dabbing with my finger so that I can make some of that light pink along the top. And encouraging it a little bit more there, but it, that's, that's coming out quite dark. I can always dab some of that away if it's too dark. But I just, uh, I want you to trust me, this looks like a mess right now, but we are going somewhere with it. And now the other magic here is that when you spray water, you encourage it to even travel like a river even more into the crevices and the pattern of that stencil. It also made the red on top a little paler, which I like. And before I wait too much longer, I'm going to have to dab that spine because there's uh, paint going through the center. Please subscribe and like if you like this because it helps and encourages me that I'm on the right track. And I just love to see you joining me. So yes, I waited too long for that. The damage is probably already done. There's probably already paint that's gone through the center spine into the next page, but that's okay. Again, this is just an inexpensive paper book. And the more I add water and spray, the more I encourage it to move around, number one. And number two, it gives different grades, uh, different shades of those colors. So you get light pink, dark pink, light yellow, dark yellow, and now I'm just dabbing everywhere on the edges because I don't want that to spread. Look, it dried quite light. Just like watercolor, it goes on strong, but it dries lighter. Now I'm spraying uh, rubbing alcohol onto paper towel, and I'm using the flat of my finger, and I'm rubbing quite firmly over the surface so that the raised top part of the pattern is what gets wiped off and I reveal more white and it just accents what's darker in the grooves so I've got a real sense of depth now that it, I'm just so happy with that one I do that often in my abstracts so check out my website and you'll see when you see the work that I've done you'll have an inkling of how I did some of it next spread pencil crayons and I don't do this all the time but it is quite common for me to do this Again, and I sped it up a little so you don't get bored, but I'm trying to show you only how I move around the page. Again, at, at the beginning stage here, there's no planning. I, I basically go second by second here, and I make dis decisions instinctively as I go along. So I don't know for sure what's happening here, except that I'm using another stencil. This is a very large one. It's from Joggles. Check out joggles.com. I don't know the name of it. Uh, it's been painted over so much that now I no longer know what it is. Um, but if you check out their 9 by 12 inch masks and stencils, you'll find it. 
that I'm using my modeling paste. And now I normally also in my soul book do not do a lot of rigid square shapes. I prefer circles and smooth lines. But in this case, I thought, let's have some fun. This is for me to learn and explore as well. And I'm going outside my comfort zone. So I'm trying something new. I'm choosing purposely to use the bottom area, which is the busiest area of this stencil. Almost looks like a little cityscape. It's, I don't know what it's going to become, but I just decided to try something new that I haven't done before because I'm encouraging you to do it as well. And using the small paint spreader here is very advantageous because there is so fine, there's such fine detail that uh, I want to catch. And careful that you don't get too much thick modeling paste in the spine because it, it, will get it will interfere with the opening and shutting of the book. So if you get it too thick in the center, you can always smudge, wipe, wipe it away with your finger. So moving around again with the small paint spreader, grabbing all that area. So all this busy area here, all those black areas that you see, those are going to be the grooves and channels where the paint will run. So it's going to give a lot of interest. And all those squares will stand out. Um, they'll shout out at us at the uh, end of this spread. You'll see them very boldly standing out, standing forward. You use the bigger spreader to flatten it out, always in one direction. And then another flattens it out, and it levels the uh, level of the modeling paste. And then pull, oh, and then dab away with your finger before you lift it off. Dab any areas where you don't want the modeling paste or where it's gone beyond the shapes that you like. And then when we lift it off, we lift it off straight up so we don't smudge and smear and scrape what was pasted in there. So get ready and lift straight up. There we go. And again, put the book aside and wash this first before you go forward because this will dry on very, very fast. If you don't catch it right away, damage is done. There we go. Now we've got our shapes. I'm just pressing to see that it's, as I'm drying it, which I sped up, I'm just checking to see that it's dry. When I went further with the paint, it wasn't bone dry, but it was dry enough because I'm not pressing hard when I add paint over top, so I'm not too worried about disturbing those shapes. But if you do have thicker paint and you press harder, then just make sure that it's really dry before you move forward. So I sprayed a lot of water again so that once I add the color, it spreads. And I'm using a very long, bristled, very soft brush because it, it delicately adds the paint and it doesn't um, put it on like big swaths of paint strokes. It delicately applies it around the page and lets it go into those grooves. Keep, keep uh, being mindful of the pages underneath. And I'm dabbing away at the top because I want all that yellow to stay on the bottom. In the last spread, I didn't mind that the water spread it everywhere. But in this case, I'm trying to show you now how you can control slightly where your paint goes. Now I want to add blue up top. So I'm going to add more uh, water first with the spray bottle. Again, my light, delicate brush, and I'm very softly adding this. I'm not pressing. I'm floating the brush across the page, if you will. Um, that way you get a very subtle effect of that blue. That's just stunning. And watch how the blue goes into the grooves, finds those shapes, defines those shapes. It'd be really hard to paint that afterwards and make it look like that, almost impossible. This is called layering, where you do these things layer by layer. And now when I add water and spray hard, it, the, the force of the spray pushes the paint away and reveals more of the white paste that we put there, and it reveals the shape. And then the blue settles on the page surface. Look at the interesting um, things happening there as it hit the paste. Lots of fun. Hard to do that in any other way. I've got my Nicolazzo Gold, which I'll do after, but first I'm going to do my Indian Yellow, which is what I started with. Now I've got 
now that that below is dry and I use a very fine lining brush to bring out some of the grooves that um, Indian yellow looks darker just because I didn't put water underneath first so it's full strength right out of the bottle so you can see how dark that color is and then it, it's a good accent against the more citrusy yellow that the water forced it to become so same color but different depths this is why I love these high flow acrylics and then I'm just sort of spreading it around making I'm, I'm trying to again create layers of depth in the color and the background so that these boxy shapes jump forward now this technique I'm showing you is very deliberate I'm using a fine brush and staying in the grooves and channels what I'm going to do next is show you another way of doing that without being so careful so here I'm adding more full strength along the bottom now I'm using my nicolazzo gold which is a deeper color and I start off looking like I'm going in in the ch grooves and channels but I'm showing you pretty much all I'm doing is adding paint to the area now I'm using my finger instead and I'm pressing very hard so what it does is it forces this darker color to go down into the surface of the paper and leave the brighter color on top and because I rubbed hard it rubs away on the modeling paste and and reveals it being lighter then here I deliberately did even more without being careful and rub really hard and look at the magic it spread into the grooves and I didn't have to be um, um, I didn't have to be really careful with my painting it did it for me so there's a really important technique for you I sprayed more rubbing alcohol on paper towel I'm rubbing on the top very firmly it's not going to rub off from the paper area because um, it absorbed into the paper already but anywhere where there's modeling paste I'm able to rub away eventually a lot of that color so I did that on purpose now I could have just added what get got a paintbrush out and added white on top of those but why all I have to do is rub away and I get the white right there already and also number two it reveals my mark making that was done below because that modeling paste is semi-transparent so that's fun too is to see marks and if I was to paint those boxes white and then get a pencil crayon and do those colors it wouldn't have had the depth that this is look it up close those fun areas that's achieved by doing it the way we did it new spread spray some water I'm learning my lesson as I go along with this book and trying to be quicker at protecting that inner spine so now because I've got a lot of water I can dab with the paintbrush and it starts to spread but that's a fairly thick paint so if you don't have a lot of water like where the blue is the blue seems to be more liquid than the yellow was so the blue seems to have spread quicker than the yellow did so with the yellow areas I'm going to have to spray water and force that to move around the page if I don't spread any water on there these will dry as is and you're just going to end up with circle smudges I want to show you how you can move the paint around the page that um, quinacridone red is so strong and bold trust me this isn't going to stay like this but if you don't put strong paint on first then when you add this water there's nothing to spread so you have to be bold you have to be patient you have to trust oh and get that center spine damage is done but as fast as you can dab that away the better and using the the edge of the paper towel like that it's a great way to get right into the, the the spine of the book and I'm always dabbing making sure the underside doesn't ruin the spread that was painted below look how fun that is it looks like tie-dye and you can only achieve that by putting paint down and then spraying water and letting it spread you can't paint that or it wouldn't be very easy to do so now that's turning olive green because I probably still had blue paint on the br brush but that's okay this is all about learning what paint does if I didn't like that I could have sprayed a good dose of water on there and, and dabbed away and I might, might have been able to really 
relieve or release some of that paint, but now I'm purposely putting it on dark because I know I'm going to spread spread it with more water. Spray, 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 spread, spread. Look at that. It's just bleeding into areas. It, and because it's a new book and the left, like the pages are, when I open it flat like that, it, they're bubbling and it wants to force the water to go to that center spine. So that's the only issue with doing these little books is you've got to be very mindful of that. I'm adding more blue because I want, I feel like I've got so much pink I need more blue. Where the blue meets, right there where the blue met the green and the red, it turned almost brown. That's how you make brown, by the way. Take your three primary colors of blue, yellow, and red, mix them together, you get brown. So I'm trying really hard with these happy bright colors not to overlap them too much because they do get muddy. There, look at all that pooling into the center again. This is a tiny little book, and that is one of the issues, but learning these little techniques on this little book, you can apply it to a bigger sheet of paper that you could be happy to frame. Um, so don't worry that it's going into the spine. This is just our book of practice. But I call it my soul book because it's mindfulness moments, and if I like it at the end and the pages make me happy, then I eventually later on add quotes. I do writing. You could add stickers. There's things you can do, but this is your little soul book that you can go to if you're in a rotten mood and you need to be distracted. Instead of sitting and stewing over something and, and, and fretting and worrying, just open up your book and get into your zone just by looking at it. I, I look at my little soul books all the time. They remind me, you know, to stay grounded and, and stay happy. That was a big mess. See, I didn't get that before fast enough. It left a huge mess there. So that's okay. So what I did actually on the previous spread is I left it like it is because I told you that it's, I'm free to add quotes on that page later on. Now I'm going to do an identical technique, but I'm going to be very bold and strong with the colors because I'm going to add um, my mono print, white mono print tissue paper pattern over top. And it has, um, the pattern in it has lots of transparent lines that will show and reveal this strong color beneath it once I apply that to this page. So if you don't use strong colors, there's not enough to show through my um, page that I glue on. So this is, this is fun. This is magic. If you've seen my other videos, especially my very first ones in my 8 by 8 inch pages, I do a lot of strong colors and then gluing a printed tissue paper pattern over top. So in, in the first few spreads here, I've shown you how the first thing we do is do modeling paste as a pattern. And in this case, and the color over top, now I'm doing a similar effect, but we're doing the color first and then the mask over top later. So two ways of doing a similar result that I like to do in my abstracts. I like giving you options. I'm smudging that because it became a very dark, almost black, where the red met the blue. I like to keep my colors bright and happy. So I'm just moving it around the page so that it's everywhere because when I put the print down, first of all, I don't know which print I'm using yet. It will be a print with lots of white and then lots of transparent pattern so that these colors can show through. And because of that, I'm doing some splashes. I'm mixing it up a bit. You see where that red is too? It feathers up a little. It makes interesting um, pattern. Again, I don't know what, how much of that will be revealed later, but that's the fun and the joy of this. It's always little happy surprises. So this was the previous spread, which is dry. And again, I want to remind you how soft and fuzzy and dreamlike it is. And that way I can write quotes all over it. It's just a background in this case. The next spread we're doing is bolder. And I'm going to put my tissue paper pattern over it. And it won't be a page to write quotes. It'll be a page just of interest. All that interesting, fuzzy little detail there and the splatters they may or may not show up, but they're there just in case. So I've got a bunch of choices here. I'm trying to pick a print that's got a lot of white on it 
and then interesting revealing areas to show through the color. Um, I can't quite decide. Like that, that's flowers. Not too sure. That one's too busy. I like it, but I've done that before. That one's way too busy. Don't like it. This is my this is one of my choices. That's a ghost print, so that's the same print but lighter. And then there's this one, the flowers, and I decided, oh, it meet, you know, when you try all the back and forth and you, when you put it back down, you go, yep, it's really clear to me which one I wanted to use. And lucky for me, oh, I'm protecting the pages because I'll be putting matte medium down as a glue now and I don't want it to, to mess anything up. So I'm going to liberally apply that all over both pages of the spread. And I'm putting a lot on there because that printed tissue has a lot of white paint on it and... It, in order for all of that to get absorbed onto this page, I need a lot of matte medium. And look at how it just transforms what we did there into something new. And again, now you can see why we had to have such uh, strong colors because it needs to show through. I'm using a larger paint spreader to really get inside the groove of the spine because otherwise it dries and wants to come away from there and bubble up. So I'm even pressing it quite hard there. I don't even care if that slices it a little. And then I use the spreader to just spread that across the glued page. Look at how fun that is. I like how there's a chalky effect because there's little bits of tissue paper, a white there that still show up. And it just looks like I dusted this with chalk. Now I'm adding more matte medium to help dissolve that tissue and really adhere that print on top of my page. This is so much fun. I can't wait for you to uh, do it yourself because you're just gonna have a blast. It's, it's just remarkable how you can transform what looked like a mess into something amazing. So you have to, as an abstract artist, and a soul artist, you have to have faith and just experiment and have fun. And I cut away all the edges of the tissue once it was dry, and here we go. Isn't that beautiful? So the first page was for quotes. This one's just to look at and, and get lost in the moment. The only thing I want to do now is I don't want that chalky white effect everywhere. I would like to bring out some of that white and make it more powerful so that the white pops forward, the petals and white petals pop forward, and then the printed lines go to the background more. So I've got a fine brush. I've sped this up. I didn't paint that quickly, by the way, but I sped it up so you don't get bored. But I wanted you to see how I move around the page and the decisions that I make. And the only way I can do that is to speed this up. I don't want to cut anything out. Um, it's a soft, soft brush, so I'm able to either press lightly for fine lines or press harder for bigger areas. And that fine liner dispenser is a great way of dabbing on a little bit and then I'm just spreading it with the brush. If I was to put too much on the brush and put my brush down, I'd have a smudgy mess of paint. This is a great way of keeping the details fine and delicate. This is the stage where Again, I sped this up. This took a little longer. And this is the moment where I really get lost in, in mindfulness. I'm not thinking about anything. All I'm doing is like my, my mind is completely shut off and I'm just in the moment. And it's just so therapeutic. There's something about moving that brush around the page, what it does. I'm not too worried about going over the lines a little because in some cases I wanted to make a bigger area of white, so I did it on purpose, like there. Do you see the difference? This is magic. This is so much fun. It's just such a pleasure. Quite often I've got my favorite playlist on, I'm listening to my favorite music, and I'm just in such a happy Joan. This is Joan's working on her soul moment. Wow, just, it's just amazing this technique. I just, so fond of it.
And we didn't, you know, like I say, you don't know how, you don't have to draw a flower. Use a stencil that's got a flower, make an imprint. And if I didn't have tissue paper, you could have taken that stencil, placed it on the page, and added white paint over it. That's another way of doing it. Now I've, I've, I've done seven spreads now, and I like to do at the end of each week a tab on the side of the page. So I've got watercolor paper out. I've made a strip there one inch high. Now I'm making it one and a quarter inch wide. And then I'm going to find, I'm going to, re, I'm going to find the middle point, which is five eighths of an inch. I actually got rid of, I flattened the lead out of there so that the point there has no lead and I'm pressing hard to make an indent. And that way the page, the little marker folds very easily along that. That's a little trick. And I've got some good glue for book binding. And I'm giving it a good coating of glue. And it will spread all over that once I press it down. This is really nice glue. I'll put it in my notes so that you can uh, get the same. And I'm going down. The first pit tab is going to be below where the page cur curves at the top corner. And I'm probably going to have four tabs, so I'm going to overlap them a little bit. But this is the first placement. Rub away any of the glue and clamp it with something so that it dries nice and flat. So I'm going to do a new trick because I, I, I really enjoy this, but because it's in my soul journal, I want to soften the look a little, make it a little bit more dreamy. So I've got in a bowl one-third white paint, two-thirds matte medium, and I'm giving that a really good blend, and what I'm making is a semi-transparent glaze. And I'm going all over it, most of the page, and what I'm doing is making it a little bit dreamy and cloudy, like a fog. The matte medium dries almost clear, but because I've got a little bit of white in there, it's going to dry a little lighter, but not much. So you can see how that's transformed it. Again, you could have left that like it was if you like bold primary colors, but I like it a little more dreamy. And as I work around the page, I make decisions. Do I want it quite often as well? I don't want the same left and right being the same. Uh, I want in this case, the left to be even more white and cloudy than the right page, so that it forces your eye to move around the page. Now, because I've got a white tab, I like my tabs to blend harmoniously with the page. So I'm adding yellow, and unfortunately, I grabbed the wrong yellow, but that's okay, I'm dabbing back. And, and these are all chakra colors, it looks like, so it doesn't matter that this is a bit of a bright yellow, and as I add water and dab, it, it minimizes the effect. And, and look at how when I put it over the blue, how green it got. Adding some blue, and again, that looks really dark, but I'm dabbing away. I'm constantly, remember how we made this spread in the first place was putting color down and then subduing it. So I'm doing the same thing with the tab. Otherwise, the tab wouldn't be complementary. So the more I dab away and soften it, the more it matches the page. And I'm adding more water to dab away even more. Because there's matte medium on there, it's coated the image um, below. So I could add more water and wipe off because that yellow didn't get absorbed in any paper. It was just sitting on the surface. And I didn't like that residue yellow, so I'm adding some more white to clean it up a little bit. And I'll dab a little white over top that tab. And don't worry that that got a little messy. Who cares? And a little white there, just to carry on that pattern. Now it matches. Now it almost looks like that tab was there all along when I did the painting. So I've got the other spread, which is ready to be dreamy in itself, just because of how I did it. And I can write quotes on it. This one, I'm calling this my chakra flowers, because that's what it looks like. I decided I wanted more dreamy on the left. I like asymmetry, but be mindful, the more matte medium I'm adding like now, the more the pages will stick if I close the book. So for sure, don't close this book until it's bone, bone dry. In fact, leave it overnight, leave it a few days, 
uh, because it will stick. Love it. So make sure that you put it on a table or a shelf like this. Don't let the pages cling together. And make sure you dust it with baby powder. Anyway, have fun. Thanks for joining me.